our, our second speaker today is Xiu Zhuang Huang, who is going to be telling us about designing sparse, reliable graph splam, ah, slam, a graph theoretic approach. So go ahead. OK, thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Xiu Zhuang Huang. I'm from University of Technology, Sydney. And this is a joint work with the uh, University of Southern California. So a, a more detailed topic of this uh, presentation is actually an approximation algorithm for designing sparse graphs with maximum weighted number of spanning trees. So we want to design a sparse graph which has maximum weighted number of spanning trees. Uh, first, I briefly introduce what's the meaning of a spanning tree. So a spanning uh, tree is actually a subgraph uh, with including all the vertices and it's a tree. For example, in this particular graph, uh, that's one of the spanning trees. So we are care about the total number of spanning trees within a particular graph. And uh, sometimes when the edges has weights, we look at uh, the weighted number of spanning trees. So in SLAM problem, especially for post-graph SLAM, we can easily represent it as a graph. Uh, so the, all the nodes are the uh, robot poses and edges are the pairwise uh, measurements. And uh, the edge weights in this case can be uh, used to represent the uncertainty of the measurements. Uh, this is an example of a uh, uh, SLAM post graph, and we have V1, V2, V3, V4, V5 are all the poses, and the edges uh, are like that. And the uh, solving slam means we find the configuration of the poses and uh, we have also uncertainties of all the poses estimation. Uh, this is another post slam graph. You can see the two graphs has the same number of nodes, same number of edges, but the number of spanning tree are different. So basically, if you look at the graph, if you each graph has a cycle. If you cut any edge in the cycle, you got a spanning tree for these two examples. And for the left-hand side, you can cut four possible edges to get spanning tree. So altogether, there are four spanning trees. On the right-hand side, you have a cycle of three edges. You cut one, you get a spanning tree. So altogether, you have three uh, spanning trees. So the left-hand side has larger number of spanning trees than the right-hand side. Uh, slam problem. So in uh, ICAR 2016, we proved this uh, uh, result. Basically, we proved that the volume of the uncertainty ellipsoid of the final slam estimate is closely related to the weighted number of spanning trees. Uh, I will ignore the detailed uh, uh, result, but uh, the key message is that uh, minimizing the determinant of the car's magic of the maximum likelihood estimate in SLAM is almost the same as maximize the weighted number of spanning trees in the SLAM graph. But uh, another uh, critical issue in uh, SLAM and many other problem is the sparsity. So we don't want uh, the graph to be too dense, even though the accuracy can be improved. So in this paper, we basically look at the problem of approximation algorithms for designing a sparse graph which has the optimal number of uh, spanning trees. So we call it T optimality. And we also pro provide some uh, provable guarantees. So the problem we consider is like this. So we have a graph and we have a, a candidate sets. So for example, we have uh, original graph, we have three possible edges to be added. And the question to ask is, we want to, want to pick, say, two of the three to add to the slam graph, sorry. Uh, we want to pick two from the three candidates to add to the graph. And uh, we want to find the, the two that maximize the uh, weighted number of spending trees. And we can also consider the problem of uh, Graph pruning, for example, we have three possible edges. We want to get rid of one. Which one to get rid of? So those two problems are pretty similar, so we only focus on the first one. So mathematically, 
we can define a problem like this. So given an initial graph with a, a set of uh, nodes and set of edges and the weights, and we have a candidate set of edges, we want to choose a subset from the candidate sets. And uh, the number of edges we have selected is fixed k. And we want to maximize the number of spanning trees of the combined graph. Uh, this problem has been uh, encountered uh, previously in different areas, not in this uh, slum uh, area. And uh, it's uh, still an open problem, mainly because uh, there's many, many possibilities, and the uh, exhaustive search is intractable. In IROS 14, we consider the case when k equal to 1, meaning you only have a choose, you choose one candidate add, to add to the graph at a time. And in that case, we prove that uh, solving this problem basically is to find an edge which has a maximum effective resistance which is closely related to the distance between the two vertices of the edge. So we propose two approximation algorithms in the same paper. The first one is a greedy method. The me greedy method is not uh, uh, difficult, but uh, we basically prove some performance guarantee for this greedy method. Uh, before that, I give you some uh, background. So a function from a set to uh, like a real uh, uh, number is actually a mon monotone if you have this first uh, property. And it's a submodular if it, 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 it is a diminishing returning property. So this submodularity, um, I will use a small example. For example, uh, we are giving an Oscar to uh, two actors. One is a young actor who has never got an Oscar before. Another is an old actor who has already got a number of Oscars. So giving this Oscar reward to the young actor will make it much more happier than the old actor. So that's the kind of submodularity. <laughs> so we basically, with this submodularity property, the, in early like 60s, there's a proof that this greedy method can give some kind of guarantee. So in this work, we basically prove that this function is actually a monotone log submodular. And because of that, we can say the greedy method for our case can provide a constant factor of optimality. The second method is uh, convex relaxation. So we basically say for the candidate edge, we allocate some uh, parameters, pi. So three for the three edges, each one we allocate a parameter pi. And if this pi equal to one, means we select it. If pi equal to zero, not selected. So the problem is basically is uh, still the maximizing this uh, uh, function and subject to the sum of pi i equal to k. And this pi has to be zero or one. If we relax this problem, by changing the pi into any real number between zero and one, then we have a simpler problem, which can be solved by standard uh, uh, convex optimization algorithm. And because it's a relaxation, so the solution is not uh, the original problem, uh, but we can do some rounding. If the, the solution has happened to be zero and one exactly, that's good, that's our solution. But if it's not, we need to do some roundings. So basically for probably some larger pies, we treat it as one, a smaller pies, we treat it as zero. So there's some approximation that can be done. So based on those two methods, the good thing is we can provide some performance guarantee. We can get lower bound, upper bound for the optimal value of the solution. So this is a, a result we can achieve. Uh, greedy, convex, uh, we use those solutions, we can get lower bound and upper bound. And also for 
any given design, suppose someone gave me a solution, I want to see how good it is. We can use this result to calculate the optimality gap of this particular design. So this is a result using uh, Intel Research Lab data set. So the K here means uh, the total number of edges selected from a candidate. The candidate set contains about 900 uh, edges. And uh, you can see the blue one and the green one are the upper bound, and the red and the black one are the lower bound. So it's uh, our lower bound and the upper bound are pretty uh, close here, so you can see our bound given is very tight. Uh, this is an example of uh, selecting 161 edits out of the 900 uh, uh, loop closure edits for the Intel dataset. Uh, there are many applications, not only in the slum area, but also other areas. Uh, we'll probably not talk about in details. So main, the main contribution is we uh, can find a new submodularity graph environment, which is log of the number spanning tree, and we provide the optimal approximate algorithm for the designing of the graphs. Uh, we have also the lower bound and upper bound for those. So we are aim is going for active slam, but currently we haven't really looked at the actual active slam problem. So then one limitation of this uh, approach is probably we haven't really comparing with the existing axis slam algorithm in particular. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. Uh, I think uh, if we think about a kind of sum mapping of SLAM, then that's a kind of uh, possibility. Uh, currently, we treat each pose or feature as a node. But in that case, probably each sum map will be treated as a node, and uh, the, the link between sum maps is kind of uh, like a mirror uh, Probably it can be done, but we haven't really looked at it that into details yet. K, top K. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, that's also a good point. I think uh, if uh, currently the result we got so far is just basically the pick the top K. Uh, largest pi. But uh, yeah, using some uh, stochastic uh, kind of uh, uh, principle there, we will probably improve the result a bit more. Uh, for active slam, I think uh, for, for, we are considering the situation when, say, a particular robot uh, reaches a particular point, and suppose it have a, say, another scan or image collected, and compare with the previous uh, data, they have multiple possible loop closures. Loop closure means, uh, doesn't mean the big loop closure can be smaller ones. So the question to ask is oh, which one to choose? So if we choose all the loop closures, we are making the graph a lot dense, which is difficult to solve. We want to pick the most important ones. So you can choose like two or three out of the, all the possible 10 or those kind of uh, loop closures. So th yeah, this is uh, actually the uh, active slam problem we can consider for this kind of scenario.
Okay, thank you.